We're getting towards the end of season two of Use It or Lose It, episode 10. And for our very loyal 72 followers now, you will notice that we've got a new venue, a beautiful new venue, our own logo. How beautiful is that? And for a new venue, we got a very special guest today as well. By chance, Faf de Klerk was in South Africa and he's in Cape Town for only for seven days. We would love to see him on the rugby field rather, but we are joined by... The Mercurial, Faf de Klerk. Welcome, Faf. Thank you, John. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, it's awesome. It's just, just by chance. Yeah. Um, one SMS and you're here <laughs> in Cape Town. You, didn't, you don't enjoy the Manchester weather this time of the year? What's the Definitely story? not. Trying to get away as much as possible. But uh, now we had a nice wedding here, so luckily you could come down for that. Oh, congratulations. Um, Did you get married? Nope. Oh, so, oh sorry. <laughs> uh, let me just get my beer. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. Is there any form of pressure on that front or not yet? It's starting to come now. <laughs> but right. I, I told her she's going to have to ask first and then I'll yeah. then get the rings afterwards. So. Yeah, there's no rush. Eh? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. First thing that springs to mind is obviously got injured in the Lions, second test, took a break. We thought it's a hip flexor. Got injured against the the All Blacks. Obviously, turned out it was more serious than that. Just give us a quick update on what was wrong, procedure that followed, and then you know what's the the recovery period or time frame that we're looking at. Because I was I was very surprised not to see him on crutches, yeah. to be honest. So it's good to see you walking around. But uh, what what's happening there? Uh, yeah. So my the rectus femoris tendon. So it's basically a flexor tendon, just um, tore ninety percent off the bone. So they just had to reattach it to the bone with two screws and sounds like three to four months. So hopefully closer to three months and then I should be ready to go again. So not, not totally screwed. Mm. Yeah, I need to. <laughs> but, like, yeah. but like in saying that, so that, I mean, <laughs> the first time you felt it, that, that tendon probably came off the bone a little bit anyway. Yes, 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 yes. And then you got diagnosed with like a tear in your hip flexor. Yes. You come back and then you play, you obviously played with pain, I, I presume. Yeah, a little bit of pain and discomfort, but it only kicks in when you kick <laughs> and run. And yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, the kicking jokes came in a lot. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so yeah. then I yeah, just tore again, yeah. felt it pop in the, in the last. Funny game. you should say that because we obviously did this episode on very short notice, but yeah. the videos came in. Mm. No, the, the videos did come in. And, they did and, come and, in. And, and literally, I mean, our supporters must know that. We literally put this together in 24 hours. We got we got our crew together. Fuff confirmed, and he made himself available. So we're just very, so very happy that we um, that we uh, got him here. So Fuff, we do have a couple of questions. And whoops, I'm just going to pause that there. And before before we we get to that one, um, you know, because you're kind of expecting the the, the obvious questions. Um, just have a listen to that question. Press play that at the, at the top. How's it, Faf? Yadre French, all the way from Beijing, China. Um, big line supporter, even bigger Springbok supporter. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, have you ever considered making a brandy of your own? You know, a bit of a brandy with a kick. Um, <laughs> on a serious note, a uh, big fan of your, of your play. Mm. We all know you like to run with the ball. Um, it's been great to see how you adapted your game to uh, to fit in with the Springbok um, game plan. So yeah, um, always enjoy watching you, whether you're running or kicking the ball. Uh, John and Skulk, always lucky to watch your show. I'm a huge fan. Um, greetings all the way from Ice Cold China. And um, enjoy the South African summer. Cheers, guys. Uh, thanks, China. <laughs> See, we've even got supporters in, in China. Um, is, that, is that the ones we paid for? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the views we, we paid for, for we sure. Don't, we, don't, we don't pay. <laughs> no, any, we don't, any, any, we don't <laughs> even get paid. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, Faf, the, the, you know, it's, it's a kind of debate all around, you know, the kicking with a box. And uh, we're not going to, you know, as to the, the, the show is not really about delving into the, the tactics of the rugby, but... You know, is that something that kind of irritates you at times? Um, you know, does it get to you? Um, no, not in a, if we win, it's fine. Yeah. Then I can handle it. But um, no, I think knowing the structure and knowing if I'm if I'm doing my my job right and the coaches are happy with me, that's probably the most important thing. Um, it's always difficult with 
supporters and fans, they all, all have their view and we have to respect that. So um, sometimes it gets a bit tough, but um, I think all in all, it doesn't get to me too much. But that's, that's a style, right? And, and you do, there's a method behind the madness. You know, there's a reason why we are playing like that. You know, it's to conserve energy. We kick to get the ball back. We want to put teams under pressure. And when you actually do handle that kick, it's the hardest thing to play off because mm. everyone's behind the ball. You know, you've got to run and all of us are running yes, onto yes, it. Yes. You know, so it's so difficult to regenerate that momentum. But then you play for sales sharks and you guys got a different mentality in how you go about playing. Mm. And, yeah. um, and, and a lot of that's more attacking intent. And you've got free reign there. And yes. You watch you play there. You Even your first season there, I remember AJ McGinty, he Fuff. broke his leg. He fluff and, and Fuff kicked goal. You know, really, I don't think you missed in six games or something. People <laughs> yeah. don't even know you can kick goal. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think it's more kicking. But, uh, yeah, no, I think I'd, I'd like to adapt and, and um, try and do what I can for the team. Um, obviously, at sale, is, the consequence is not as much as, as for your country. Yeah. So, I think that that's a massive thing. Um, but, yeah, I think it's like you say, it's whatever works for what the team needs and... I'll try and provide that, hopefully. Yeah. Because because it's like you know it's it's it, it's kind of you know you 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 win a World Cup with a, playing a certain style of rugby, and and a style that that's successful. It wins you a World Cup. You know the the pinnacle of of anyone's career. And then you know then you might you know have a day off. You play the same way, but you have a day mm. off. You lose a Test match, and then suddenly you know now they need to change. They need to change. Whereas when you're winning. Everyone wants to be part of that, yes. you know. It's a, I suppose that's the, the, the pressures and the, um, just the situation you find yourself in as a I, pro I always, so. I always feel for the Knights because their heads are down most of the time. Eh? Mm. So most of your information comes from people whose heads are up, whether it's yeah. a forward who's going to carry or it's mm. the 10 telling you to kick where the space is or it's your winger to go a kick on kick, flip it again. Mm. Um, and that information gets coached from you and you don't have that time to have a look or... No, not always. You no. basic, not always. You yeah, have kind of information. You yeah. go on information that's mm. from... So you're so reliant on the people in and around you. Same with the breakdown. You mm. know, there's games where the, we do our jobs as loose forwards and, and forwards and that ruck is quick and clean. And there's days like on, like this weekend where it's raining in, in, in Cardiff where it's so tricky to get that ball out the ruck. And Northern Hemisphere teaches how to get that ball out yeah. of the ruck. Definitely does. So, Fafia, let, let, let's just you know cover the World Cup quickly. I mean, such a such an amazing experience. Uh, you know, winning it was it was it really was it life changing? Have you you know now a couple of years post it uh, was it life changing? Um, do you guys want to take that call or do we? <laughs> okay, <laughs> <let's> just, <laughs> we can continue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Um, I, th I think it's had a massive impact on my life, but I wouldn't say it, it changed a lot. Um, obviously, grateful and it was an amazing experience and I, I would never give it up for anything. But um, I think just in the sense of being a bit more well-known and stuff like that, so you get approached by a bit more opportunities. But I'm not going to say it's changed the type of person who I am and um, strive to try and stay the same as far as possible. So... Um, I don't think, think life-changing, but definitely in a lot better stuff came from it. So. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, we want to we wanna go into, into actually where it started for you, but there's just one question a little bit more, more local. Um, hey, Faf. I hope you're doing well. Hey, John. Hey, Skulk. Absolutely love your guys' show. I'm Sasha from Stellenbosch, and my questions for Faf are... Faf, when you guys had just won the Rugby World Cup, what was the feeling? And what was it like when you were celebrating in the change room in your famous South African swimming costume and you were about to meet Prince Harry? My second question is, is that you're a role model for so many people out there, but who was your rugby role model when you were growing up? I hope your recovery is going well and that you'll be back with the boys in no time. Thanks, guys. So, ro role models? Sure. Um... Yeah, a lot of people think it. I uh, always will say a nine, but I never. There was a few nines that I looked mm. up to. Um, US was obviously one, and but I always like smaller, nippier guys. Like um, Brent Russell was a massive fan mm. of mine. I liked Percy a lot. Brayton I liked a lot. So why, why Percy? Was it there? Probably there. <laughs> <Was it> there? <laughs> and he was left-footed. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, and he had always had fancy boots on back in the day. Now we all wear funny boots. Yeah. But he started it a lot of it. So um, they were always white or gold. Or yeah. At one stage, you and Jake White had a thing where you could only wear black boots. And then, long story actually, but Victor Matfield signed. He went from Puma to Canterbury, warmed up in the Canterbury, the boot exploded, came back, and then I had an extra pair there. So I had one black pair, one white pair. So Victor said, listen, Jake's going to kill you. You play in the white pair, and I play on the, <laughs> in the black pair. So we jogged out, and then I basically hid away, hid away, hid away, and then Jake stood, like, gave everyone like a handshake and looked down. He didn't even give me a handshake, just looked down at my white boots, <laughs> and I sprinted out. Anyway, long story short, got a man of the match. And Percy was always in this black puma with like the gold strap yeah, on the side. Yeah. The very next day, once the boot ban, the black boot ban got cancelled, Monty was in the most outrageous gold I and silver. The gold and, ones, yeah. Yeah. So where, where did it start for you, Faf? So you, you're from Nelspruit originally, yeah. but then um, then you made the move to, to Pretoria at school still, right? Yeah, so obviously when through school, it's all about Anjan. Yeah, no, we can go on. It seems like our, you know, our crew just was, they, they're very popular at the moment, getting calls from everywhere. No, start, but clicked, hey, I let's just keep going. I clicked to see the what's wrong click a percent. Not, that is <laughs> not your 3310. No, uh, so, yeah, you... Yeah, so, yeah, standard eight went to Waterkloof to sort of actually pursue uh, my cricket a bit more. Okay. Mm. Um, what did you do as a cricketer? Uh, yeah. Batsman and, and wicketkeeper, so that was my, yeah. We've had sad. to fight in that yeah. Protea game. <laughs> yeah, <who's laughs> but his knees were gone. <laughs> yeah. He, can start, he can start keeping, but he can only go for about five overs. Yeah. He's got to stop in. The Milan brothers are from Waterkloof as well. Yes, yes, they? yes. Yeah, well, they right. also, all three came from Nalspray, so okay. we sort of went to the same time, went to Waterkloof. So all three of them I know very well. Um, so yeah, and then just Jimmy Steinhardt got a hold of me. Um, he was still coaching us at school. And then, yeah, sort of went from then. Yeah, and, and, and then um, did you go varsity or yeah, move, so went straight to, to the Lions? Yeah, I signed under 19 and 21 contract out of school. Uh, went to UJ, uh, got a bursary there. Uh, played a bit of, never varsity cup, played for varsity and played under 19, under 21. And then sort of fell out contract, didn't know where to go really. So it was a bit of a... Strange time. Yeah. Um, and then saw Jimmy stand us at the golf course one day and he said, listen, I need a nine for, for, the, for the Pumas. Puma. And then went for a trial for a week and then, yeah, started, started playing through there. Because I can actually remember we played, and, and interestingly, if I get my facts right now, Sia's first test match. Against Nelspray. Scotland at Nelspray. Mm. And we trained against you guys. Yes, you yes, remember? Yes, and yes, you, yes. you were with the Pumas then. Yes. So the box were training against the Pumas. And I remember just the yeah. flipping irritating <laughs> nine. Yeah. And, you know. There's always one of them. There's always that one <laughs> you train against. Yeah. That's the irritating one yeah, that you remember. You think, just like, but yeah. Yes, and I like to get a hold of this you one. Yeah. That wasn't not so nice for me that day. Yeah. <laughs> I had to like, I don't know why, Scotland had a nippy nine or something. So... Yeah. You were practicing rock defense, and all I had to do was either show and go and just push and pull and smash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was the only guy. I was so tired. <laughs> that is not but so nice. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't show anything then. You need to yeah. show your mates. And then, and then how many years did you do at the Puma? Because then you went on loan to, to the Lions, the Lions yes. for Super Rugby. Yeah, so it was a couple of years or more than that? Yeah, probably f uh, four years, four seasons at the Pumas. Um, but in my, then I signed at the Lions. So I played... Two Super Rugby's where I was still at the Pumas. Okay. So then 2015, I think I went to, to the Lions then for permanently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, like, so let's, let's get into the head of Fuff, the Clags, Kala. Mm -hmm. Will you just throw a couple of those quick fire questions at Fuff? Okay, See Fuff. if he's as nippy with his answers as what, he's, as what he is on the field. Yeah, so it's the, the quick fire okay. questions. Brought to you by Vodacom. Don't be so nervous. Don't be nervous. <laughs> You've got to be nervous for John's jokes. But I'll, I'll, start, I'll start off nice and easy and go, speedos or board shorts? Uh, speedos. Premiership rugby or super rugby? Premiership. Ooh, mm. very interesting. Because super rugby doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> no, no. Probably had more success at the sales sharks then. And we'll go to the next one. No, sales shark, no. <laughs> sales sharks or the lions? Ooh, uh, lions in the right era was very good. 
Um, Joburg or slash Nelspreit or Manchester? Nelspreit. Nice. Nice. Die Laafveld. Yeah. Love it also. Um, beer or brandy? Brand, um. <laughs> brand, brand, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is brandy. A, Let's go brandy, back to any yeah, French's yeah, question here. Yeah. 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 Would you ever make brand, this Brandy with a kick. <laughs> a braai or since you're in Manchester at the moment, a pub lunch. Braai or pub lunch? 100% braai. And then the last one. Oh, there's another one. Blonde or brunette? Has to be blonde. Yeah, it's got to be blonde. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. And then the last one. It must be the hardest one of all. Kick or kick? <laughs> Second one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we, we didn't really get to know Faf much better after that. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> Faf, we've, we've, already, we've already touched on, you know, you, you said your, your role models weren't really scrum-offs. Uh, the, the kind of role of a scrum-off over the years, you know, since you've, you've been playing for the box now for um, six, seven years, Five years. Five years. Yes. Yeah, it's one less than <laughs> one less than six. Um, has it changed? You know, when you started Super Rugby versus where you are at now. Obviously, you've played different roles at different teams. Do you feel the 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 role of a scrum has changed a lot? I think for for me personally, it, it has a lot. Um, just not in terms of just the the way, but the way I sort of. Developed my game a bit. It's definitely changed a bit. Um, I think um, on defence, I can have a, started to create a way where I can have a bigger impact on games through defensive moments. And then also, like at the Lions, we didn't really kick. We just ran from everywhere. Um, they needed to adapt my game to learn how to control a game as well. And But I think there's a lot more space for, for nines to not just be... Obviously, your basics needs to be in place. But there's a lot more other other ways where you can have, have big influence on games, and that's something that I try and achieve um, when I go out. Yeah. And, and you would say that you know going to the north definitely had a, a positive effect on that. You learn a different style, you understand how to play a different way, and we come back to play for the box. You've sort of seen it through another set of eyes, yeah. and you can you know, transfer that knowledge to you know not only the team but also to coaches and some players coming through. Yeah, I think that that's also what's the great thing about Brassi and Jock and they they lent on a lot of the guys to to give info if they know something. It's not like mm. only what they see and do is that that's the way. Um, so I think that's nice. We have a, a good relationship in terms of that. Um, we can share info if we have it, and um, I think that's a, a a great like sort of way. of thing that we have at at the Springboks now. It's very open and guys share stuff. So. That, that is great, yeah. Because it, it does seem as if the team, and, you know, we saw the performance on the weekend again and, you know, being able to grind out that win against Wales, mm. uh, it does seem as if there's a lot more accountability and responsibility on the players and also being able to give input in terms of preparing a plan, you know, yeah. whereas in the past and certainly yeah. when, you know, when we began, it was very much just driven by the coaches telling you what to do, yeah. whereas now the players actually do have an input. They decide on what is best for the team and then, you need to go and execute it, right? Yeah, yeah. I definitely think that that's a big thing. And but, like you both of you know, if if you don't have buy-in from everyone, mm. um, it's never going to work. And I think probably against Australia, there was a few guys probably listening to too many voices, like we 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 spoke about earlier, um, sort of going away from our soul a bit. And um, we see definitely saw what happened after that. So I think even though there's a lot of input from everybody. As long as it's just buying from yeah. from everyone, that's that's the most important thing. If, if you go out there and you're not not committed to a plan or don't don't trust what's going to happen, then yeah. you're definitely not going to perform. But so it's also that you know it's such a tough environment. You know, international sport. You know, the margins are so small. You saw that first Test match against the All Blacks, which we should have won mm. if we had a little bit more intent and attacking intent. Yeah. An awareness that you know we we could just actually beat them by 15 points. So the second Test match, and that's a sign of a, a, a great team, is we immediately changed what we did wrong in the first game. And when we did put them under pressure through our kicking game, like we did in the first yeah. game, we actually had a go. We had a full yeah. go, and our first try is a great example of it, mm. and sort of set the tone for hold on, we're going to score 30 points here because we actually have got that attacking intent when the opportunity you know arise. So in the in the first Test. You know, it was just too cagey. We were too yeah. nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. No, for sure. That that's a big thing. I I can you can just see it in guys' eyes and you if the forwards get yeah. us go get get us go forward, then I know it's going to be a lot easier today. And sometimes it just doesn't look the same to me. A few guys just it just looks weird. Yeah, it's like yeah, you know prep was good the whole week. Everything. All perfect, the right yeah. things were said, but. Before the game, and then when you're in the game, it's like you can just see it's mm. not, it's just not happening. It's almost like sometimes there's that implicit, I mean, it's that little lack of belief that everyone's up for it, but there's a lack of belief that you're actually good enough to beat mm. the All Blacks. I mean, I mean, we had the same thing in 2004, the first game we played under Jake White. I mean, we should have beaten them comfortably in in Crush in Crushers, mm. and we lost on the hoot that Dougie Howlett scored one yeah, yeah, in yeah. the corner. And the main message that came out from that mess, uh, match was that we just didn't believe. In the very next ma- match, we obviously we beat them comfortably yes. at Ellis Park, which is a different match, but we beat them 40 to 26. But it was exactly the same thing you guys went through, that mm. learning experience and that pain of they were there for the taking. We did everything we wanted to accept you know, actually have the belief and take that opportunity yeah, yeah. that we can beat them. And that second test match, you know, that was a great, great watch. I mean, yeah, it was yeah. amazing to watch. It's interesting you say about the about the belief, um, Scala, because you know, doubt doubt is a is, is a big thing as well. And there was quite a quite a nice, uh, uh, you know, look at that one, Faf. And hello, John. Hello, Skalk. Hello, Faf. He's, he's not English. Um, okay. Faf, I just want to know. Um, was it ever a dream of yours to become a Springbok rugby player when you were in high school? And then I also want to know um, if there ever was a moment of doubt in your career. Was there ever a moment where you thought, oh, I might have to give up rugby or something like that? And then, um, John, you always joke about the 27 followers, but this show is much bigger than that and we enjoy it. Put the head up internet. <laughs> just just scroll, uh, scroll this this way, right? Hello, John, Skulk and Fuff. Uh, that I just Francia want to touch on as well. Uh, well, actually, living in Kimberley now. Um, I have two questions for Fuff. Uh, firstly, um, who does your hair and uh, what products do <laughs> you use? And secondly, um, who do you think is the best scrum off to ever play the game? Uh, thanks for a great show, guys. Cheers. So forget the hair for now because we're going to get to the fun stuff. Okay. But those two questions, one, you know, did you, did you ever doubt yourself? Because, I mean, I certainly didn't in my career eventually. All of, you know, all of us. All, all of us do. Mm. And, you know, and then secondly, you know, who do you think is, is kind of the, you know, the best, the best scrum off to ever play the game? Because, I mean, you know, now suddenly you, you're part of that conversation. Yeah, so on the doubt, um, I think there's a, there's, there's always, it, it can creep in. And I said, like earlier when I said, when, when I was sort of out of contract, I didn't know where to go, what I'm gonna, what, I was going to try and play for Tux a bit and then luckily got the opportunity at, at uh, the Pumas. But then you sort of get to a stage where you're not earning money, you're studying still and, well, I need to do something now. Is it, should I go for something else? So I think that doubt is, is then creeps in. Um, luckily, I was my parents supported me through everything, and there was never a case where I um, got pressure from them to to give it up and, and, and try something else. So um, never doubted my ability. I don't think um, always try to work hard and, and do my thing. So I don't think in my ability I ever doubted. Just in is this the right way to go? Because a lot of guys try and push on for long, and, and at the end they've still got nothing. Yeah, and, you want to yeah. make the right decision. Yeah, right? yeah. But I mean that because. I, you know, at the end of the day, Scala as well, like, you know, you, you get youngsters wanting to want to play rugby. Yeah. Not, not a lot of them is going to make it. You know, yeah. the reality is not a lot of guys make it. And they see you there now, you know, one of the best scrum offs in the world, World Cup winner, you know, all the, uh, you've yeah. achieved, you know, so much already. But, but they don't know, you know, what it was like 10 years mm-hmm. ago or yeah. what you went through to be able to get there. And, you know, that is the beauty about rugby and, and sport, yeah? No, 100%. I think it's that, you know, that resilience and that fight you've got to have. And like Faf said, important thing, like he never doubted himself. Yeah. You know, like your doubt and my doubt probably came through a lot of injuries we sustained at, at a younger level. And then you sort of miss out on, you know, nice, nice things that mm. there is. But also, you know, in my case, you know, I had to go through a club system to actually make it, you know. Um, and everyone's got their challenges. It's unique to everyone. But yeah, like... So. And, and above all, also, one thing, we, we need timing and we need so much luck. Because you know as a fact, if you walk out of school 
in South Africa, there's so many talented blokes that's probably better than you and you need your little chance. Yeah, and then, yeah. you know, the one thing about all of us who's made it is when you did have that opportunity, yeah, I mean, you grabbed it with both hands and you just put your head down and go for it. Because if you miss out on that opportunity, you don't know when it's no, going to no, come no. again. Yeah, and, and that's what, you know, all of the players who make it has got. Yeah. Was, that, was that Jimmy Steinhaus in your case? You know, giving that, that opportunity that you needed? Definitely. And I obviously wasn't then a mature player at all. So he used to tell me, like, you need to just go and do more box kicks, do more passing. And so every off day that first whole year, I didn't. I promise, probably started two or three games that entire year. Um, Sean Fenter was playing great rugby. So I, every now and again, against a, a Falco or something, I'll get a, a start. Get a start. Um, so he really, like, yeah, he made me very driven in that in that sense and really actually made me improve so much. But also he's a very difficult character to, <laughs> to deal with. So it um, goes both ways. But um, yeah, he, he, he had a massive impact on that. He, he gave me the shot that, 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 you needed. that I needed, definitely. Yeah. yeah, the other question that the guy also asked, best scrum off to have played the game, you reckon? I think it's very... You're not allowed to choose yourself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no. <laughs> to ever play, so I'm still playing. Yeah. No, um, I think it's very difficult to... I feel like rugby's changed so much, yeah. so mm -hmm. it's more for me era-wise, there's certain guys that were the best in that era. So to say US was the best compared to somebody more recent is, is not really fair for me because it's yeah, completely it's different. Right, yeah. So it, it is difficult, but... Um, I think definitely U.S. has to be up there. Um, Aaron Smith has done phenomenal things and, and to be so consistent for so long is, is great. Um, yeah, now DuPont's coming through. Yeah. So it's difficult and this is probably between, for me, between U.S. and probably Gregan has to be up there. But it's difficult, like I said, eras or... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Hard. It's always very difficult to make a call like that. So, two things that stood out. We've covered rugby now. <clears throat> two things that stood out with the questions is one, the speedo. We'll get to that. <laughs> and secondly, is this. So we've actually got three videos there, but just mm. just have just play press play there. Hello, Faf. GT from right. Uppington. Uh, I hope you're doing well. <laughs> uh, the question I want to ask you today is, how do you get your hair so soft and fluffy? Because <laughs> I've tried everything and I, I still can't get my hair to, to your hair's quality. Just want to know. And thank you, John and Scala, for the great show. Enjoying it every week. Thank you, guys. Okay, scroll, scroll that way. Yeah. How's it team? Great show, really loving the jokes. Day 82 of another lockdown in Auckland, New Zealand. My question is barbershop related. Faf, do you mind sharing your hair treatment plan and your condition of choice? Asking for a friend. And would you ever consider a mullet? Cheers, mullet. Uh, <laughs> one more scroll. Hello guys, uh, you're from Rudeport. Uh, it's kind of mean like that, eh? Yeah. Nice, uh... Nice, eh? Very nice. Low chilling. <laughs> so my question to Fav, very plain and simple. I'll do it in two languages for the rest of the world to understand. So, Fav, when is your hair on? When is your hair like to be cutting your hair, man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. So the hair. It's yeah. all about the is, is hair. It, has it always yeah. been your thing? No, this is where I retire from the conversation. No. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm gone. I'm so gone. you know where you're going yeah. with that. Yeah, no. Skulk wasn't yeah, started yeah, no. like that. Yeah, yeah, no. No. It's a before after. I actually spoke to when, when we were after at the trophy tour at, in, yes. in Stalys. She, she came to me, she's like, your Skala also had such nice hair <laughs> when we started dating. So, yeah. yeah. Um, when did it become a thing? I don't know. Um, Have you had long hair since you left school? Not as long as it's now. I went through a phase, obviously now in lockdown, where I just couldn't cut it for a year, so I just yeah. went so long. And I don't know, there's not one girl at the club that can cut hair, so I was just... Yeah. Um, 
Weet die wel. Ja, oké. Het probably, no, I don't know. It's always probably been a thing, yeah. but it's never been this long. And I think I'd probably just tried to annoy my parents a bit because they, my dad was always like, when are you going to cut your hair? Yeah. Very just conservative. Cut it, cut, yeah, and then I, just now it's a thing and now I don't need to cut it anymore. Uh, uh, things we've got to cover. Will you ever consider a mullet? What's this number nine from Australia now? McDermott. Oh, yes. Not McDermott. Is it McDermott? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah. Uh, Will you ever go that way? Can we go mullet, full mullet? Yes, if I get this, it's for a very big cause, or I get paid a lot of money, I might go mullet. Let <laughs> me just, just yeah, say that into yeah, camera. Yeah, say it into camera. <laughs> We've got it. We've got it. Uh, Puff is going uh, full mullet for a worthy cause, and then uh, your conditioner of choice. I'm not so stingy, but I just try and go for pretty expensive things, and then it turns out it can work out. Yeah. Uh, there's Olaplex, which I use, which is very nice. <laughs> yeah. But. Back in the day, it was just Pantene. And then who uses more conditioner, you or your, your, missus. your missus? Me, just because <laughs> yeah. I wash my hair every day and she doesn't. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hygiene, eh? <laughs> hygiene. There you, get, there you have it. You know, rugby players are clean and they love conditioner. <laughs> Skulk used to like conditioner as well. If you yeah. use it too much. <laughs> Your hair disappears. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can use it. Or lose it. And then you lose it. Okay. Um, so, okay, uh, do, do you feel it's where your strength lies in the hair? I say that, so. Yeah, so you don't have to cut it. So I don't have to cut it. I think okay. it does, so hopefully it does. Did you see again here, yeah, we've got like from Auckland, New Zealand and everywhere. Why it's cool, cool, eh? Very yeah. cool. No, we've, we've China and no, we've got yeah. China. We've got big our China's following. everywhere. We've got our China's in Beijing. We've got big our China's here. Yeah. Big following, big following in Uppington. 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 Yeah. Uppington. Yeah. Uppington. Uppington. Yeah. Uppington. Uppington. Yeah. Definitely. So, Faf, you on the hair topic? Um, obviously, Mona and Stan is much older than you, but you play together now in the Lion series. Um, we have a photo here of Mona's son. <laughs> Skull just showing there. Is that? Is uh, that you? Is, is, I mean. Is, is Mona got to be worried that <laughs> something, something happened you in the past? Spent a lot, yeah, of, a lot time of time together. But yeah, she was in lock. We were in lockdown, so oh, okay, there's no that. way it could have happened. <laughs> and in any case, his son is a little bit taller than you. Yes. Um, so <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> the, my grandpa's son. <laughs> the other, the other thing that came up a lot was, you probably guess what it was. But just have a listen there. Yeah. There's, let me just see how many we have there. We have one, two, two of those. Only two that we put on. But the ladies were very interested in uh, oh, knowing what, what happened. How's it, guys? Thanks so much for a great show. I Pleasure. think it's about time that South Africa got such a fun rugby show. So thanks she for that. She knows her rugby, yeah. <laughs> and then my question for Faf is a very serious one. Faf, I just want to know, when you decided to wear that South African flag speedo at the Rugby World Cup final, did you have any idea then that your buns were going to be such an internet sensation? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks guys again for a great show and I hope that Faf answers my question. <laughs> we'll get that, yeah. John Scholar, Angus here from Pinyo. Great show guys. Um, I enjoy it, unlike uh, most of your guests who don't even watch it before they appear. I actually uh, have been following from episode one, so um, thanks for a wonderful show, guys. Uh, my question to Faf is, um, I want to know if he wears the South African print budgie smuggler only on special occasions, like the World Cup and maybe the Lion Series, or does he wear it um, for all the matches he plays in? Um, I would love to get that answer from Faf, and um, yeah, guys, keep the show up. Um, keep the good work coming, and uh, yeah, always uh, support you guys and appreciate the work you do. Cheers. Okay. So do you always do you always wear it before any game? No, just for just for the Springbok games. Okay. Yeah, just for the Springbok matches. That's when I and, wear it. And obviously, this is not a superstition. A big mm, probably a little bit, but I'm not very superstitious. Yeah. But I just. They're very comfortable. And then for when you play for the sail okay. sharks, what do you wear then? We've got sail budgies as well. Yeah. Sail budgies. Yeah. Are they for sail? Yes. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to, John, I know for a fact you were a bit superstitious when you were younger. Yeah, yeah, kind I of. I also had what I had, light blue underpants and um, right boot first, and then I had a mouth guard and the right sock. Yeah, yeah. 
And then I just started forgetting about them yeah. all at once. And then the first game had upset me, and then I was just like, no, nothing. I was also nothing anymore. Also with the cricket and stuff, put this pad on, and I just yeah. like didn't get runs. I was like, this doesn't work. No, so it doesn't work. Yeah, just, just left everything. Let, let it go. <laughs> yeah. um, what was your show? I, I don't know. It like changed every week depending on to how I played and what the result was. I mean, we did play one game. I don't know if it was a superstition. We played England. In Bloemfontein, oh. and uh, we had lunch pre pre match, and we had Jake White actually came to sit with me and John, and he had like six bowls of pasta, and I had one bowl, and John had two bowls, and just before we went to the stadium, I was in the toilet. I'm like, something's wrong. I with don't my know. Stomach. I don't even know if we can so, share this. So, on something, <laughs> something, something, something's wrong with my stomach. Like, I mean, have you gone to the bathroom? He says, no, he's going to do his at the stadium, which I thought might be. <laughs> A yeah. superstition, you know, oh, it's okay, a superstition. Okay, okay. He, he does, I did he, always go to, his yeah, pre-match yeah, poo yeah. happens at the at stadium. The stadium. <laughs> so anyway, we, we run up, we do the warm-up. We obviously in our block kit and we've got our white <laughs> shorts on. And John used to wear these thick medics <laughs> underneath. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, he's busy like stretching, like doing this one. And I'm talking to him and he just lets <laughs> it go. And he goes... <laughs> I'm like, what happened? He said, no, no, I, I just shat myself. <laughs> and as I, as he stood up, it started dripping I down, down his leg. I like shot this. it. So now, now, <laughs> now he's running like this. In a medex. He's running down, and now the warm-up's like, you know, everything's just frantic. You know, he cut went this up out. <laughs> and he's sitting there, and he's telling me that it's not it's the same type of, you know, who I was talking about earlier. Yeah. It's like this greasy, yeah, yeah, yeah. orange type of thing. <laughs> so now he's there cleaning up himself. Has got no underpants. He's got no medex, whatever. And he walks out. And as he walks out, he walks into Gert Small, mm. who is now like this. <laughs> and he's telling John, who's... And he said, John, we have to get the... <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, let's move on. Who, I think we should who, move who on. Who shat in his pants? Who shat in his pants? And Josh like, no, 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 I'll get the call through nice and early. No, that's so, not, wasn't that that's, a superstition that's for a not, while? What? No. Dude, you know, I shat no, myself okay. before every game, you're right. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's a true story, eh? Yeah, I'm like, but, yeah, it's but, a nice one. But it's get. not exactly the way it went, but Scott uh, likes to, but it, it was. Uh, <laughs> scored a hell of a try that game. Yeah. Um, no one can take me. I've <laughs> totally lost my yeah, train no of thought. No one can get close to you. It's, it's, yeah. Um, it's thank you. Was the, lady, <laughs> the lady also asked, so did you think that your bum, buns will mm. become a sensation? Because it's quite a, it's quite a ballsy move to do that, eh? Yeah, John. Yeah. Um, no, never thought that. And I actually wasn't the only guy dressed that way. You were just a bit. I was just caught yeah. doing it. But there is a... That's what we do after games. We take yeah, off yeah. our kits and then we walk around like that. And then <laughs> I walked into him and then it became no, no intentions at all. So, yeah. There's no such feeling like when you, you play any game. And, and you deliver a performance like that, and obviously World Cup final is the exception. I mean, that's mm. nectar, that's multiplies it by a million. But like that feeling when you sit in that changing room and you know, that vibe within people talking yeah. about, you know, how good was that? Yeah. How good was this? You know, that work. Um, and you just sit there and suck lagers. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, they, yeah. they just flow. So you're not scared to do stuff like that off the field, but on the field you're quite fearless as well. So. Two questions How's regarding gents? that. Great. Thanks for a great show. It's Ivan here. And uh, my question for Faf is, uh, where do you get your fearlessness from? You seem to always manage to pick on the biggest guy on the rugby field and get right in their faces and make yourself a nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder if you maybe had a Jack Russell or maybe a Fox Terrier as a kid. And, uh, you channel that animal when you're out there on the, the pitch. Thanks again, guys, for a great show. Always enjoy it. Okay. Thanks, Talk buddy. Sense. Channel the am animal. There's one. Animal. Let's go to the next one. Hi, guys. First off, I would just like to say thank you so much for the amazing and inspirational players all of you are. Fof, I'd like to know what goes through your mind when you clear guys out of the way that are so much bigger than you as if they know more than bowling pins? Thanks for the great and awesome show, guys. I wish it was like that, but it doesn't always work. <laughs> it seems like it, eh? Yeah, I mean, even in the Lions, yeah, what game did you get the yellow card? 
Was did he get a yellow card? Yeah, that was in the SAA game. Uh, the SAA game, game. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. just flip and throw. Very sim. It might be there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very similar to Skulk. You just <laughs> throw your body around, right? I, re- I remember, like, me and Faf played against each other a fair bit, obviously, Saracens against Sale, and, yeah. like, me losing my temper at Faf there once <laughs> at, yeah. at Saracens, and it was exactly that. A little, I mean, he's just everywhere. He's flying yeah. around, and I'm like, Faf, ah. Niemand dacht hier. Ja, ja, ja. Kom dan. You just, this is what you do. Yeah, I, don't, I think it's probably come from... A young age where I've always been told I'm too small and... Do you have older brothers? N- I have a half-brother that's okay. much older, but um, nothing to do with that. I, I honestly don't know where it came from. from yeah. um, obviously, my dad played, my brother played rugby and all that, but I think it's always being told I'm too small and wanting to show that I can also do just what other guys can do. Probably not as well as some guys, but... Um, no. Yeah, I just yeah. I need I need to go fly into things because I am smaller. So if I don't, if I do it a little half-hearted, it's we, I'm gonna come off second base. We absolutely love that when you afford and you, know, you guys have got that freedom to sometimes just you know mm. take a dig at someone, whatever, whoever you want to line up. And I mean, it's the nicest feeling. It sort of gives you that freedom to like, yeah, let's go up and yeah. over them. And like, and also we watch, love watching that physicality. You know, yeah, it's like a, it's mm. it's one of the nicest things to watch when you fly up and you smash a bloke yeah, twice yeah. your size and you get in there, and it sort of gives all of us a look at a big if and a hip yeah, to it and yeah. go like, yeah, but that's amazing. Yeah. And advice for smaller guys making tackles. Yeah, I think kids, young kids, tackle technique is 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 big. Um, like really just making sure that your technique is good because we need to tackle a bit lower and a bit, just need to be more, a lot more aggressive in your stuff that you do. But um, yeah, I think definitely just fearlessness is just, that's just something, I don't know if you can learn it or what it is, but yeah. not being scared is, is a big one. Because if you're going to be scared, you're probably going to get hurt. The ticker, the ticker needs to work. Because yeah. it's also counterintuitive, eh? like when, you, when you're scared, you normally get hurt. Yeah, you know, if you, if you're the one initiating the contact, most times you're actually okay. You know, you're the one in charge of the contact. When you when you sit back and you wait for it, yeah. oh, do you think I that's mean, why I got squashed. injured so much? Yeah. <laughs> John, I wasn't I mean, actually in tackles yeah, when I got yeah, injured. That right? and the fact that you every now and then attended a ruck. I actually I mean, just watched your was it that game against New Zealand where you like cancelled a few guys. You got a yellow card for it, high tackle and mm-hmm. quarter and. Yeah, those things happen yeah. after often. Um, <laughs> you know, obviously, it was a long time ago. I had a hair, I had power. Yeah. We were sucked up for it, though. Yeah, um, we always sucked Like, up we waited up. for John to do the intercept. And yeah. the reason why he intercepted, apparently, was because he was too scared to make the tackle. Yeah. <laughs> so he just caught the ball instead. Clever. I mean, it was just <laughs> yeah. very yeah. clever. Yeah. Yeah. Avoid um, the tackle, let's intercept. Yeah, it's I, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> but just look at the video. Okay. Watch the video. Hi guys, it's Eric here from the Sunshine Coast Check in Australia. Queensland, Australia. John Sculler, thank you so much for the Lacquer Show. Um, I really appreciate it and enjoy um, getting to know the players a little bit better <coughs> and uh, legends of the game a little bit better and looking forward to more shows. Um, to Faf, Faf, you remind me a little bit of Skull Burger and See, it go. might be the golden locks or it might be the b- way you run the ball up and make big tackles. Um, so my question to you is, um, has there ever been a player that you were sort of afraid to run up against or make a big tackle against? Um, I know for myself, I enjoy <laughs> watching you run over Danny Cipriani, make big tackles and, um, and um, yeah, just going flat out all the time. Um, but yeah, that's my question. And guys, thanks so much. Have a good one. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Anyone you were ever afraid of? I know it's not, the answer is no. But like... No, you do doubt. But I, there's yeah. definitely one guy that I tried to line up and got bumped hard. That's like the first proper bump yeah. and it was Will Skelton. Yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. a bit of a... I actually tried it. <laughs> Yeah. And, yeah. There's a bit of a white difference. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 it was the exact same story with Will too. So we played uh, played them. And you just don't understand how big, like you see him in the videos and you think, okay, like I'm going to go up and get him. And then you see him in the flesh. And, you know, I played with him and he's got a size 17 foot. And he weighs, when he's skinny, he weighs 145. When he's overweight, he weighs 160. But he doesn't weigh anything in between. <laughs> 
So we played Stormers um, versus Waratahs, and we had old Dimitri Katerkiles. Mm. And then they had this like start to move anyway, but like the whole week, I'm like, no, let me get Will, and they're going, no, 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 you got to let Dimitri tackle him, and then you finish him <laughs> over the top. Okay. So the first one comes, obviously we fired up, and Dimitri gets squashed, and I go over the top, but now like he's five meters over the game line, so I go, Dimitri, swap. And I fly off for the back, and I think, okay, it's time. Me and Will, we're going to meet each other. And as I'm about to tackle him, something just tells me, like, what the hell were you thinking? I sort of bail out, and the shoulder charge him, and the ball goes away. I go the one way, Will goes the other way, the ball goes the other way. And I was just like, I mean, how big is this human being? No, I mean, it's just next, he just squashes you, right? Yeah, and, and I, yeah, I tried to line him up, and he dropped his shoulder, and I just went. No, it's just no contest there. Yeah. Um, we're going to get to the end now, Faf, and, and before we do that, we're going to do the bad jokes okay. section, which is loads of fun. You'll really enjoy <laughs> that. But we have to cover, you know, sell sharks and your move to, to England as well. Um, you guys have been, you know, relatively successful. I think, you know, it was certainly a big South African influence yeah. there, and, you know, you got some, a good run going. Um, you know, how does that experience be? And, and, and the reason I'm thinking of it now as well, and, and talk to me a little bit about your your centre Manu Tuyalagi there, because Manu is also a guy that you know <laughs> likes to bump also, folks. And, when he's know, fit, he's probably one of player. the most scary yeah. blokes to yeah. face. Huh? He's he is, but he's such a nice guy. Yeah. So yeah, firstly, like Sale is, and Manchester is, is is a great was been a great experience, and I'm I really enjoy. Do you support it. City or United? No, United. Okay. I would say, yeah. It's going well for you at the moment, eh? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a lovely, <laughs> lovely weekend for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been a great experience. And um, I must say, like, the last, the whole COVID year was really tough. Not being able to get parents over or mm. see, see friends and family was really tough. Um, you sort of appreciate what you, what you have when you have it. And that, that opened my eyes a bit. But I definitely grew up very, had to grow up really quickly, doing your own laundry and cleaning and, all that stuff makes you grow up really quickly, and uh, but yeah, I wouldn't. It, it's definitely that that move changed my life completely, and enjoying a lot of it. Not the weather. Yeah, Scala would know it's not so lucky. Yeah. Where you were, it's, a bit it's better. It's better, better where we were, but mm. still not. But up up there, it's it's hard at the AJ Bell. Mm. And yeah. We used to play each other on a Friday night normally. You know, yeah, it's it's not like a e that's not an easy place to play. I see, they can play in skins now, and yeah, yeah. I saw that. Colors, I saw that. Yeah. So I had, I had six months there at, at Leicester, and, and yes, money, yes, money yes, was yes. obviously still there. My my centre partner. That's why I asked the question. But uh, yeah, the weather it gets to you, eh? So when you come visit Cape Town oh, in November like yeah. this, it's a oh, bit I different to Manchester yes. in November. Um, yeah, it's probably going to start snowing soon when I go back. Lovely. Uh, yeah, like a nice rain yeah. all day. Uh, yeah. But yeah, money. You're money really money. selling it. Yeah, you're yeah. really <laughs> selling the experience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but uh, yeah, money got there and. We're all like a little bit unsure of what yeah. type of guy he is, and oh, such a good um, guy. such and such a nice guy. Yeah. And I don't think he made an, he didn't knock a ball, he didn't do anything wrong for probably six weeks of training and playing. There was just did, didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. And I see now that he's fit, he's, he's lost a lot of weight, and he's he's destroying guys again. So it's, yeah. it's glad to see that he's he's back and fit, and hopefully he can stay like that. No, it's awesome to see him back playing, um, but hopefully he won't play against South Africa. Yes. <laughs> so, Faf was extremely generous to bring along the World Cup. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not the World Cup. But what we're going to do here is, this is the Bad Jokes Trophy. It's also not the Bad Jokes Trophy, but we just had a trophy and we're going to use it. <clears throat> How this works, Faf, you're gonna you're gonna select one of these, mm. and Skull's gonna select, and I'm gonna select, and then we have a look. But don't read it yet. Don't open yet. So what we're gonna do? Each of us gets three jokes. Okay. Three or two, Mr. Cameraman. We the, go. The pins are naughty, there. Okay. The jokes are. Okay, so you start at the top. If you ask a question, you're allowed to laugh, but the. If you tell a joke, you can laugh. You can tell. You can laugh. Okay. You're not allowed to read yet. Because, no, because you have to start at the top. Oh. So when you... No, not yet. So you're going to go first. Or you, Skull's going to go first. Okay. Skull's going to go first. Then, then the you, guess. then me. Okay. And then we go one each. And then second. And then third. Can you pick second. jokes? You just go top no, to bottom. No, you go top. Top. You're not uh, laughing. You're not 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 laughing
Okay, no one's allowed to laugh. Yeah, nobody's laughing. Okay, okay, you're not allowed to laugh. No, okay. no one. It's point system, eh? I'll go first. Yes. I have six eyes, two mouths and three ears. What am I? Ugly. I'm joking. I'm laughing because I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not allowed. No, you're not. Uh, uh, thanks, Sean. Yeah. yeah. I can't get it uh, What do Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh have in common? Same middle name. Yeah. That's a proper bad joke. Yeah, that is bad. <laughs> that is as bad as they get. We sold our guest down the river there. <laughs> That's the guest funny joke. That's amazing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call what do you call a cheap circumcision a rip off <laughs> hey nah. that's a good one yeah, that that's a really good one that's a good one uh, is that a buffalo? is that play on eh? that is, that's a very good yeah. one Oh, yeah, I get I get seven points for that. <laughs> did you did you know what? I did yeah, not know. Yeah. I didn't choose any. You're not allowed to read. Go to the second one. What's brown, hairy, and wears sunglasses? A coconut on vacation. No, uh, no, nope. not happy with that one. <laughs> I hope I get a better one. Why were they called the Dark Ages? Because it was dark. There were lots of nights. Once again, sold down the river. <laughs> <laughs> Play me. Play me. I think John Just give that joke again. Yeah. How could I rig it? Okay, go, 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 Just go, give go, me that joke again and I still don't get it. So in the dark ages, oh, there were lots of nights. See, you're normally better at telling the jokes, yeah. not actually understanding yeah. them. I, I, I'll get them. Me and Faf will get them okay. for you. That's good. That's good one. You've got zero. What do you call a lazy doctor? Doctor Doolittle. Because he doesn't, he doesn't do a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Nice, nice. Okay. Well, you, are you getting better at this game at not laughing? Last round. What's the score? It's one. Uh, okay, I've zero, got a golf one, seven. funnily enough. Why do golfers wear two pairs of pants? In case they get a hole in one. I'll say. You get it? No. Yeah, I've oh, got okay. it. But I've never, I've never, I've never had a hole in one. Have you got a hole in one? No. No. Flip and more, I stand got one and yeah, that was good. Oh. So, so irritating when someone yeah. plays one round of golf <laughs> second and he right gets one. Guy. <laughs> There's so many stains. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this okay. is really going so well. So third one from the third. No, you don't. Big yeah. one. Did you hear about the cheese factory that exploded in France? There was nothing left but the brie. That's your best one. I like <laughs> yeah, it. The brie. <laughs> you, the brie. You look quite chuffed with yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. If you okay. I was glad I could read it. What do you call a camel in a drought? I'm a light. A dry humper. Why did the salad go to the studio? <laughs> okay, sudden death. Sudden death. Because it's been bad, we've got to do one more. We need a bit of laughing. Okay. Here we go, boys. Have you seen the movie Constipated? It hasn't come out yet. <laughs> It didn't uh, happen in that game. No. It didn't happen in no. that game for me. That's a good one. I've got one for you, Five. Do you have okay. do, you, do you have a good one there? I have one, I think. You're gonna it's retire. A good one. Okay. How do you spot a blind guy on a nude beach? It's not hard. <laughs> okay, that's, a good one. that's a good one. Very relevant. Um, 
This one is also very relevant. And you know what the trick is here, Faf? So, you know, I've got years and years of uh, doing bad jokes. Uh, it's all about the de- delivery. delivery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it's brought to you by DHL mm-hmm. because DHL delivers. How? How? How do you get a squirrel down from a tree? You pull down your pants and you show them your nuts. <laughs> Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Uh, uh, okay. Thanks, guys. Uh, it was better than the previous one. Uh, John, can I just? Uh, I don't know if this format is quite. Uh, I know you sort of sharing the responsibility, yeah. but I quite like it when you, you take like charge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like it. The I like it. Is key. Yeah. 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 Scott, before we get to that, yes. five. Would you like to, or would you please? Choose if there's a pen there as well. Your favorite question. It's a not many normal. I think I quite enjoyed the, the one about doubt. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good one. Uh, let's just get that one. Was this for? Here we go. For Hugh. Hello, Fa. Hugh Engelbrecht. Hugh Engelbrecht. You don't have to write Hugh, you can okay. just sign it. But this is for Hugh. And is he in Uppington? Hello, Scott. Hello, Fa. I just want. No, I don't know where it's from, but Hugh, thank you very much. And to the, you know, to a lot of the Afrikaans-speaking um, supporters that speak English, thanks for that. There was, know, a lot of people, tra- there was amazing translation. That, yeah, that a lot of people have. Yeah, a lot of people have been asking <laughs> us to, incredible. to do it in Afrikaans, but obviously you want to cater for everyone. But we appreciate that. I will sign as well. Here we've got a jersey coming your way from Faf de Clack. And Scala and myself. Here we go. Listen, Faf, thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks for replying on John's WhatsApp. But normally they just blue tick him and they don't get back to him. <laughs> I don't get I don't uh, have blue ticks. So. But um, yeah, yeah no, well. thank you. It's amazing. Lovely to catch up. Um, all the best with your injury. You know, it's um, we always make jokes of it, and but it's serious. And mm. uh, I hope you recover well. And um, yeah, you're missing out on a few test matches now, but you've got you know a big end to the season coming up in the Premiership, yes. which is awesome with Sale, and, and and I hope you guys go all right there with all the other South Africans. We'll be watching with a keen eye. But uh, thanks for coming on. It's definitely our shortest episode yet. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. It was yeah. a lot of fun. I appreciate it. So it was good. No, thanks, Faf. Yeah, we appreciate it. you're on holiday, but still you made the time. We we really do appreciate that. You've you've achieved so much. Uh, you know, so good luck for the the next part of your career. There's still a long way to go, and hopefully, some you know, loads of highs and loads of successes. So, thanks a lot. Enjoy, enjoy the last couple of days here in, in Cape Town before you head back to the cold. I say, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, lekker. Yes. And to the yeah, to everybody watching, thanks thanks for tuning in again. Thanks for spending time with us. We've got two episodes left of this season. Um, please tell your friends, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook. Like us on Instagram, um, and when you meet us, like us as well. Because it's cool when you meet people in person. (laughs) Cheers.